Rabani is a visiting senior fellow at the Institute for Palestine Studies in Washington, D.C. A Middle East-based analyst, he will be in the United States for the U.N. vote on Palestinian statehood later this month. You are watching Palestine Studies TV. I'm your host, Willie Yeomans. Joining us today is Mu'in Rabani, who will be serving as a visiting senior fellow at the Institute for Palestine Studies office here in Washington, D.C. Thank you for joining us today, Mu'in. Good to be here. In your role as a visiting senior fellow, you'll be making media appearances, giving talks, uh, mostly around Washington, D.C., also maybe in New York. Uh, basically, you're going to be contributing to the larger conversation around this U.N. initiative. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I was uh, asked by uh, the Institute for Palestine Studies to come out um, to help contribute to discussion and debate about the Palestine, the Palestinian uh, United Nations Initiative. I think it's an important event, and uh, and I'm very happy to uh, to be able to uh, to contribute to commentary on these issues. What exactly are the Palestinians seeking at the United Nations, and why are they doing this now? Well, good question. Um, I think we still don't know the answer about uh, about exactly what they're planning to do in the coming uh, weeks. Um, so far as I can tell, the Palestinians themselves appear not to have definitively made up their mind yet about um, uh, what, if any, um, measures they're going to take. But I think if we look at the background uh, to, to this initiative, it helps um, explain a bit about what may come in the future. Basically, you have a Palestinian leader, uh, Mahmoud Abbas uh, Abu Mazen, who has been consistently committed to a strategy of negotiations and negotiations only um, uh, in the context of U.S. sponsored diplomacy. And he's basically um, spent, you know, the, the, the past uh, five or six years that he's been in office, um, wiping spit off his face. You know, first uh, from Bush, and now arguably in even greater quantities, from the Obama administration. Um, at the same time, he is facing uh, growing challenges to his strategy, I would say even to his legitimacy at home. And there's a widespread feeling, even among the Palestinian leadership, um, that business as usual is no longer a tenable proposition, either in terms of um, achieving the objectives that they've set out for themselves in the context of diplomacy and negotiations, or in the broader context of, um, of the so-called uh, Arab Spring. Is this a tactic of last resort? Well, I think that for the leadership, it's a tactic of last resort, meaning that that their objective is not so much to alter the existing framework of negotiations, but rather an attempt um, uh, to make them more credible. Uh, uh, having said that, I think there is now a real opportunity to go well beyond the existing framework and to go to a different one. Specifically, I think um, the Palestinian UN initiative, if, if seen in broader context, and if supplemented by a variety of other measures, uh, many of which I think the current leadership opposes, but nevertheless, that it could lead to the essential first step of removing um, uh, the Palestine question in all of its dimensions from one of um, bilateral negotiations with Israel under U.S. custodianship back to um, uh, an international question to be resolved on the basis of um, Palestinian rights, non-negotiable rights, as defined by the United Nations. Isn't there a risk that they're burning this card too early? Well, of course, um, there are there are risks um, attached to uh, what the leadership is doing, and I think the primary risk is that you have this initiative, which doesn't appear to be part of any broader and, and sufficiently well thought out uh, strategy. And, and I think all kinds of comments can and should be made about that. Having said that, I think um, the real threat to the Palestinians, the mortal threat, if you will, is to um, uh, continue to operate within this um, Oslo framework, 
which has been absolutely catastrophic uh, for, for the prospects of uh, Palestinian self-determination over the course of, uh, of the past two decades. It has really thought about um, nothing other than an exponential consolidation of, uh, of Israeli occupation of, of Palestinian land. And therefore, even if against the will of those undertaking this initiative, I think um, uh, the prospects of, let's say, reformulating uh, the Palestinian question back to um, the international arena, you know, changing it from a um, from a, from bilateral negotiations under unilateral custodianship back to um, uh, a multilateral arena is what I think makes this uh, potentially very interesting and worthwhile. Today, the Palestinian Authority called Israel's reaction to the UN bid hysterical. Uh, is that a fair description, you believe, or what's kind of driving their response? To a large extent, um, uh, that is an accurate um, uh, characterization. I would say that applies equally to, to the way the Obama administration and, and some uh, European states have, have been responding to this as well. Um, you know, uh, the Palestinians are essentially doing nothing more than um, uh, seeking an opinion from the United Nations, and uh, one would hope then using that that opinion to um, uh, build a sounder case for achieving and implementing uh, their rights. Um, this, of course, is something that you know Washington and Tel Aviv have, have systematically opposed. They basically you know, believe um, uh, that the fate of Palestinians is, is to continue to live under Israeli occupation forever. Um, you know, settlement, Israeli settlement expansion has basically become the core principle of U.S. foreign policy um, uh, under Obama. And I think, you know, when the Palestinians look at all the threats that are being made by, by Netanyahu, by Lieberman, by Dennis Ross, and so on about cutting financial aid, starving the PA of funds and its ability to pay salaries and provide services. In that context, I think characterizing um, the potential uh, Israeli and American responses as hysterical is, is not inappropriate. What are some of the geopolitical implications? We've already seen in Cairo, for example, um, protesters storming the Israeli embassy, especially in the context of the Arab Spring. It seems that there's a certain wild card geopolitically. One reason that the U.S. is so firmly opposed to it is because on the one hand, um, uh, you know, they are absolutely wedded to sabotaging any meaningful moves towards Palestinian self-determination. At the same time, they don't want to have to openly play their cards, especially, you know, in the current environment of, of, of regional upheaval and, tur and, and turmoil. I think uh, Washington would much prefer not to have to um, cast yet another veto against, um, uh, against uh, things that they claim to believe in. In February, they cast the veto, um, uh, basically, in, you know, they took a position in support of um, Israeli impunity uh, as far as continued settlement expansion is concerned. And now, chances are that the U.S. Uh, will again be put in the position of casting a veto against the principle of statehood, which, you know, none other than Obama in his, uh, in his speech to the General Assembly last September, um, uh, claimed, uh, claimed to support. My own view is that this is, uh, this is leverage that the Palestinians have that they can and should use and exploit to the hilt. I mean, if you know, preventing Palestinian self-determination and undermining it and fighting it every step of the way has become such an important element, such a core principle of American Middle East policy, well, let them put their money where their mouth is. I mean, if the U.S. You know, would rather see another dozen settlements in the West Bank, even at the cost of the next demonstration in Egypt, going towards the American embassy in Cairo, well, that's a choice that the Americans will have to make. And I think that's a choice that they should be forced to make. Do you think this administration will do anything surprising or given the upcoming election, will it kind of fall into the typical routine? I, you know, I, I don't see a shred of evidence 
um, that there is any um, constructive policy emerging from Washington. And, and you know, that, that's certainly true of the last administration and this administration, and, and probably of, of the next administration as well. This isn't an issue of individuals. You know, U.S. foreign policy is, is, is um, formulated by, by institutions um, on the basis of all kinds of, of, of domestic and external factors. Um, having said that, I would add that, you know, these policies can be influenced and, and much of it comes down to how much leverage can the Palestinians bring to bear upon um, the policy formulation process in Washington. I think part of the problem is that um, the current Palestinian leadership basically feels that, you know, it's somehow um, demonstrating good behavior um, uh, not to seek to exercise or mobilize any, any leverage upon, uh, upon uh, Washington. But, you know, that's part of the reason why we are really well. And hopefully that will begin to change as well. Now, I know that during your trip, you'll be kind of participating in the public sphere in Washington, D.C., in New York, around this vote. What do you think is lacking about the conversation internally in the United States that your uh, fellowship will be contributing to? You know, the way that, that this is um, uh, being, being presented um, generally in, in American policy circles and American media is, is that somehow, you know, going to the United Nations, which is the very definition of multilateralism, is somehow a, a um, uh, unilateral and therefore illegitimate Palestinian move, which, uh, you know, is, is tantamount to bad faith and a subversion of, of what is a genuine and legitimate peace process and so on. You know, kind of arguments that have no connection whatsoever to reality is actually experienced um, uh, in, in, in the Middle East. You know, there is no peace process. Um, there is no American initiative to, uh, to get meaningful diplomacy uh, back on track. Uh, Palestinians can no longer just sit back and be occupied and count settlements. Um, something has to give. And, and the idea that somehow going to the United Nations or going back to the International Court of Justice or mobilizing um, uh, domestic and regional and international public opinion that somehow, you know, these very um, uh, traditional elements of, of statecraft and, uh, and national liberation are somehow illegitimate. You know, it's, you know, it's quite stupendous. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Mu'in? You know, what may, or for that matter, may not happen um, at the United Nations this month is significant and is important, but perhaps even more significant and important is what happens on the so-called uh, uh, day after. Um, in other words, you know, will this be the beginning um, of a transformation uh, of, of this entire question um, uh, towards you know, a, a different mode of, of seeking to achieve Palestinian um, self-determination and a credible two-state settlement? Or will it just be used uh, as, as a prod to get these um, endless and meaningless and counterproductive uh, bilateral negotiations back on track? So I, I think it's important to look as closely as what happened in October, November, December, as it is to, um, to see what happens uh, in the quarters of the UN in September. Well, I look very much forward to working with you in the D.C. office, and I think you'll have something very important to say uh, about this. Thank you very much, Will. I'm looking forward to it. If you would like to follow Muin's talks and his publications, you can check online at www.palestine-studies.org. And while you're there, please make sure to donate as well. Mm -hmm.